Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how I texture this Asian style um, cyborg asset using Substance Painter. For any long-time viewer of my channel, you might recognize this uh, cyborg. I actually did another design with it before, but I didn't like the design very much. So this time I thought I will come up with something else and hopefully finish this asset the way I wanted to. And also this cyborg is very heavily inspired by the cyborg in Ghost in the Shell. Uh, but I didn't want to do the exact same thing. I want to give it a little bit more Chinese twist and follow more ancient Chinese design. This is definitely not the most inventive idea, but it's more of an attempt to salvaging something that I was not happy with and try to make something out of it. Okay, enough talking, let's get into the process. I didn't really record the modeling part of it, but I do have one tip for you in terms of modeling. Uh, if you've seen some of my old modeling video before, you know that I like to bring some of my geometry into ZBrush to move them into place. But recently, uh, one of my modeling friends mentioned that he used the sculpting tool a lot actually inside of Maya to help with that. Um, so he doesn't have to constantly moving geometry from Maya to ZBrush and keep doing the back and forth. So I try out the sculpting tool inside of Maya and so far has been really great. If you ever tried Mobox before, uh, it's very similar to Mobox. So this way I can actually move my geometry easily, notch them into place and uh, make the whole process a lot faster. So this is what the finished modeling looks like. Um, it's quite different from a lot of other things I do, which is way more organic. This thing, even though it has this flower decoration, it does have some intricate uh, modeling going on, but in the end, it's a very hard surface asset. In terms of material, it's gonna be a lot of plastic and metal. And here is the main inspiration that I was using for this model. I also want to quickly show you my UV organization. I know that by the end, I will move this whole object into Unreal Engine for the final presentation. So I pay attention to what kind of uh, object I want to combine and put that UV into one UDIM space because I know I won't be using UDIM inside of Unreal Engine. So what will happen in the end is I'm going to import this asset as separate OBJs into Unreal and each OBJ should have its UV inside one UDIM. One texturing detail I do want to take from my main reference inspiration is those lines that's on the uh, hair geometry of the cyborg. These lines are going in very specific direction according to what the hair geometry is like. So it's not something that I can just tile inside a Substance Painter. So my plan is to lay them out inside of Mari the way I wanted to and display them in ZBrush and bake that into my high resolution mesh. So first I need to create a displacement map inside a Substance Designer. It's extremely simple, just a tile sampler and some blurring and convert it to normal map and convert it to height map. Um, something like this is, looks very machine made. It's not organic at all. So something like Substance Designer is perfect for that. Next, I will work on laying them out inside of Mari the way I wanted to and give it very specific direction that will mimic quote unquote real hair, but um, in the end it's gonna look very machine made. And a lot of people ask me why do I go to Mari and then displace in ZBrush, why don't I just do the whole process in ZBrush? You are totally welcome to do that if you're very good with ZBrush. It's just something like this that's so precise. Um, I just don't think using stencil uh, with my ZBrush skills, I can get something so perfect uh, machine like look. Also inside Amari, sometimes I can manipulate the direction and even give it a very specific curve at a specific area according to the shape of my geometry. Like here, uh, besides having the groove going a very specific direction across the geometry, I might want the groove on the side to have a little bit of a curve to it, which um, I think I can only do that in Mari. I will project this area of the stencil and I can use lattice inside of Mari to give it a curve. Inside of ZBrush, this is what it looks like after I displaced it. It's always on its own layer, so I can always go back and adjust it if I want to. Um, another question I get from people sometimes is that why don't I just displace this directly inside a Substance Painter? 
The reason for that is sometimes it's hard to predict what a 2D texture is going to do to your 3D model. So if I do it inside a ZBrush, uh, that means I will see directly what my 3D model will look like after the projection. I can adjust the level inside the ZBrush and control what my final 3D model is going to look like. Finally, we're inside a Substance Painter. First thing always is bake high to low. So this is what I have after the baking. The first thing I'm going to do is to lay out all the masks I'm going to need. I know certain things are the same material. So first thing I do is just to separate out all the materials so I can start texturing them um, separately. This is what it looks like by the end. And uh, right now it's all just very simple plastic material. I'm going to work on the face first and for me the face material is pretty simple. It's just some very hard plastic. There's no metal underneath. It's not a layer material. This model is not going to be super weathered or damaged. So uh, in general, it's pretty clean. What I will add to it is a little bit of edge weathering. I'm going to make the edge area a speck slightly more dull than uh, the main area. Next thing I want to do is to figure out some kind of interesting makeup for her. And for me, my main inspiration is Chinese Oprah makeup. They always have this super dramatic and red makeup on their faces. And I feel like that will fit my character well. But because this thing is very machine made, everything has to be super precise. I cannot just use a brush and use my hand to do anything. So here for her eyeliner makeup, I um, converted some photo I find online and made it into a stencil. I actually need to invert my stencil for this to work. And also I turn on symmetry. So I only need to do this once on one side of the face. Same process for the lower eyelid. I used another stencil for that. After that, I create another fill layer with just a pink blush color. And I try to lay out where that very pinkish um, eyeshadow is going to be. Um, first, I'm just gonna freehand use a brush just to test out uh, if it works or which area I wanted to cover. And later on, I will clean it up with something that's more precise. After I'm happy with the position of the blush, I have created two separate stencils. One is a solid shape, another one has a little bit of a gradient to it. I kind of want to test out uh, which shape works a little bit better. I created this shape in Photoshop, by the way, using the pen tool. I'm also using two different paint layers for both of the shapes. Uh, so I have the opportunity to blend them if I want to. I think in general, the faded one definitely looks way more interesting, uh, but it was fading a little too much. So I think I'm just going to blend the solid one uh, just a little bit into this. I repeated the same process on the mouth and that's how I get that uh, pattern on the mouth. Next, I'm going to start texturing the accessories. And I got quite a few pieces going on, so I kind of have a general strategy of, um, cause I know there's a lot of gold on her. So I kind of blend this gold material into places uh, on different accessories. I try to group material as much as possible, like this two different accessories is going to have basic the same type of material and type of look. The blue material was super simple, so I added some texture to it. It's kind of just like a noise uh, base color texture. And also I create another layer. I duplicate the same layer and I change the color a little bit. And uh, I'm going to add a little bit of a color variation into the flower. 
The next material I'm going to work on is this jade material. I'm going to use some marble texture to achieve the look. The texture I found is actually orange color, but I'm just gonna use some HSV adjustments to make it green. After that, I'm going to duplicate the same layer a couple times uh, and change it to blue so I can add the, some of the blue uh, color into the object. And also I'm going to duplicate it again and make it brighter so I can create that brighter area of the object. The next thing I'm going to work on is this purple flower thing. I'm going uh, quite fast here because we got quite a few accessories to get through. For this purple flower, I'm trying out some kind of shiny fabric material. Maybe it has plastic inside, but mostly we see a shiny fabric on the outside to go with the whole uh, gold theme. In general, I'm going to have a very dark purple base with some gold threads on top. After that, I'm going to make some of the petals completely gold to break up the shape so it's not too uniform everywhere. Next, I'm going to work on the patterns. So I mostly have two patterns and their UVs are completely overlapped into two types of UV. So if I work on this one pattern, all the same patterns will get textured at the same time. In terms of material, I'm gonna use the same kind of shiny fabric material again. What I need to do is to duplicate the same fabric material and give it different colors so I can sort of paint some kind of petal flower shape on it. The next thing I need to work on is the big area behind the pattern. Staying with the gold theme, I'm going to make a lot of edges a golden material. And I think in the end, I'm just gonna make the center area more of a metal material. To be honest, I wasn't sure what to do with that area. It's quite of a large area and the modeling is quite simple. So I wish I'd done uh, maybe a little bit more, more modeling to that area, but at this point, I'm just gonna give it a more of a weathered metal look. That is everything I did for this asset inside of Substance Painter. So the next step would be to import this into Unreal Engine. And I want to create another simple scene where I can do a proper lighting for this asset inside of Unreal Engine. That is going to be in the next video. So if you're curious about that, definitely subscribe to my channel and click the bell button. So when the video comes out, you will get notified. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.